Hi, I'm James Ramsey, Group Product Manager here at GitLab for the Create Stage and DevOps Lifecycle. And I wanted to do a quick demo of how to remove large files from GitLab, some of the uh, little trick tips and tricks, um, and also talk about some of the improvements that we probably need to make to make this simpler and more straightforward. So I've got a little test repo set up on a uh, copy of GitLab um, so that I can log in and poke it and do some stuff, as you'll see later. Um, on in the demo. Um, hopefully we can e expose these improvements uh, directly through the interface in a later iteration. Um, but yeah, let's start by creating some large files. Um, I've got a little command here that I can run to generate some video files, um, just of some random noise. Very unexciting, but they're pretty quick to generate and they're reasonably big. Um, to make it a realistic demo. And three, so that's probably enough. Um, all right. Yeah, they're, they're very boring. Um, yeah, they're just absolute noise. There you go. Um, but that's a cool party trick, generating a video on demand. Um, Okay, so let's uh, create a branch um, and uh, also create a second branch with a merge request. Um, and then we'll uh, see, see how there's slight differences. If you're using merge requests, um, we'll have other kinds of keep around refs that might exist. So we'll create a branch. Add video. Let's also oops, touch time. Right. This is the second branch that we'll use for the merge request to compare. Um, so we'll also create a text file. So that's going to take a little while to upload because it's a large file. Um, though I better push branch one, uh, patch one as well because I didn't push that. Um. All right. So we can see patch two, let's create a merge request. And we'll merge that back into master. Looks good to me. And also we can see that the file size has been updated now. Um, it does seem that the file size updates are not particularly immediate. So um, just bear that in mind that sometimes they don't propagate straight through. If we took a, take a look at the patch one branch, we'll see there's a different large file. Okay, so we've got 80 megabytes of video files in this repository. We want to remove them. How do we do that? GitLab has some documentation on how to do that. There's two sort of approaches. Um, you should always um, follow them in order, addressing the first approach first, which cleans up, I guess, the your public branches, like your main branch or any of your feature branches, uh, removes any large files from those. 
Um, that's really important that you do that first so everyone's working on a clean copy. Um, it's gonna cause some disruption when you start changing those branches and rewriting history, but it's much easier to get that updated and then clean up all the other history that might be lying around in other places. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but super important that you start at this step, do this one first before moving on to um, the deeper cleaning if it's needed. Um, so the best way to do this is to clone a fresh copy of your repository. Um, so, let's do that, git clone. I never know if it's going to include that HTTP or not. Um, and I never get it right. Okay. So once we've cloned it, what we're going to do is we're going to use git filter repo. Um, git filter repo has lots of different tools for reducing the repo size. I'm going to use the strip blobs command to uh, clean things out. And um, you can use whatever commands that you think are appropriate to meet your needs because you may have different requirements around which files you want to remove and which files you don't want to remove. Um, so please refer to the documentation for git repo cleaner. Okay, so let's take a look. All right, we've got the main branch, I've got the patch branch. Patch two was deleted when we merged it. Um, and now we'll run filter repo. I'm gonna delete all files larger than a megabyte. And now the next stage is to push all those branches back that we've just modified so that there's now clean copies of those branches on the server so that everyone's looking at cleaned up versions that don't have those large files. So we need to check if there's a remote. There is, so we can just um, push straight away. Um, yeah, so I think I can possibly remove this command, which just seems wrong. Um, Git push origin force all. All right, great, that's all done. Um, if you have tags, it's important to also clean up your tags because they will also uh, be connected to those large files, uh, but there's nothing for me to change here. So, if we come back and uh, take a look at this, we should see the assets directory disappear because we got rid of all the large files um, that were in the assets directory. And similarly in the patch one branch, we've removed that. One of the things to point out here is that the repository size hasn't decreased immediately. Um, and that's because um, Git objects aren't cleaned up automatically. So when you push, to Git and add things to Git, we don't clean up on every push. Um, we only do optimization and clean up tasks on a semi-regular basis after a certain level of activity. Um, what we can do is we can manually trigger garbage collection by running this housekeeping button. But it's worth pointing out that the Git GC command um, only prunes objects older than two weeks. And so I've added all these files in the last five minutes or so. So none of these are gonna be garbage collected. What, one improvement we're working on is um, making it so that garbage collection is more aggressive when you request manual garbage collection so that you get more immediate feedback. Um, and so what I'll do is I will run that on the server to show you the impact of doing so. Um, so I believe here I'm SSH into the server um, and we can see now that this folder is 82 megabytes. Um, what I'm going to do is change into that directory and 
run get GC prune equals now. So that should have had uh, a more significant impact. So if we go up and run that command again, we'll see that it's now dropped to half, 41 megabytes. Um, and that's because we only one of those videos has been pruned, even though it looks like we've pruned two. Uh, and let me show you why. Let's, remember we had a merge request. Let's look at that merge request. In the changes tab, there's the video. I can still download it. That means the video is still stored in the Git repository. This is actually a feature of GitLab. We create, um, that's a really stupid video. Um, we create keep around refs and merge request refs to prevent your um, commits from being deleted that are associated with merge requests or associated with comments. And this is so that if you come back to look at an old merge request and you're like, how did this thing get into my repository? You can find out. However, if you're trying to reduce the size of your repository or remove some kind of sensitive information, this makes it more difficult. So what can we do about that? That's what this second step's all about. So let's go and follow these instructions. This explains a little bit about what I was talking about with the merge request refs, if you want to read that. But we're going to export the project and use that to get a look at everything inside of it. So we'll go to general and then under the advanced options, we'll go to project export. And that's going to generate a complete copy of everything that's on the server. We can use that to um, clean out the stuff that we want the server to delete and then use this special feature we have um, to tell Git to GitLab to delete it. Okay. All right, here's the uh, repo export. And you'll see project.bundle. That's the output of the git bundle command. And what we can do is um, my temp directory. What we can do as the documents tell us is we can do a clone from that bundle file. Um, and we'll use the mirror argument and downloads. O3 maybe. O2. I've been doing this too many times today. O three twenty one. No. Okay, project bundle. No. Let's, so what do we call this? Repo cleanup. Cleanup. Bundle. All right. So last time I ran for each ref and you can see here, there's now a lot more reps. Keep around refs are not advertised by the server. So you can't normally see these. These are what are part of what I was mentioning about how GitLab actively creates these to prevent data being deleted as a feature. Um, similarly, the merge request refs, you can access those if you want. Um, on a read-only basis to check things out. Um, your CI might use them or you might use them for a bunch of automation because they're really handy to have those, except they make it harder to delete data. So we're gonna run the same command that we did before for filter repo. We're gonna delete, uh, rewrite the repo. And now, instead of pushing these changes up, what we're going to do is use a file that was created by filter repo. And that's because we won't accept a push to this location. GitLab won't allow you to overwrite this keep around ref or these merge request refs. It's just not permitted. Um, but what we do provide is this um, 
repository cleanup feature, which is very similar. So I'm going to open this directory. So this was this is the repository that we just ran the cleanup on. And you notice that there's a filter repo folder, and this is the output of the filter repo command. And the commit map is very useful in that it tells us what commits used to exist and what commits now exist to replace. It's like old commit, new commit, whether it got rewritten or just removed. And we can use the output of that to clean up your repo on the server. So we'll come down here into the repo, into the project settings, click repository, go to the repository cleanup feature, upload this file, repo cleanup bundle. And we'll go to the filter repo folder, upload the commit map, start the cleanup. You'll receive an email. I won't because I didn't configure my server. Uh, because I was lazy. But if we go back here, because um, I'm SSH into the server, we can be lazy and see uh, when it's finished running. Actually, it's not going to change. And here's why. So I'll prove to you that it's run <laughs> by going back into that repo. Uh, I can't type. All right. So git for each ref. See, lots of refs have been deleted. What hasn't happened is the garbage collection. Garbage collection still runs with the prune policy of two weeks. So if we run git gc prune equals now, we should see this has reduced in size significantly to what we expect it to be. So Filter repo working as expected. It was cleaning up the refs. The only thing that we've been having trouble with is the fact that pruning is not immediate. Um, and so if there's things that reference that, that mean that it's not um, a very old object, older than two weeks, it just won't be pruned. You'll have to wait two weeks and then garbage collection will prune it. We're working to change that. The other thing, um, is that these things are not updated um, super immediately. Oh. Oh. That's because I didn't configure my server properly. Um. <laughs> Bob. Here we go. So let me click edit and maybe this will trigger a file size update. Well, 40 megabytes. Okay. So um, it just seems like this, I think this is probably cached. So it takes a little while um, to propagate. So I think we need to investigate caching because um, that could be causing confusion. Um, normally this is fine because your repository won't change in size very much with each push. Um, so that is something that we do need to investigate. So that's a quick demo of how to reduce repository size, a couple of the challenges that make it kind of a tricky problem. Um, but once this file size updates consistently, consistently and um, prune, options are changed um, for when you're running these cleanup tasks. It should make cleaning up your repository much easier. Um, hopefully this was helpful um, in explaining some of the things that are going on. Catch you later. Bye.